Let's see what happens to him. Well, it's a good thing you brought him in anyway. Um, we'll make sure he's doing a-okay. Why don't you guys have a seat for a minute and we'll get right to you. <clears throat> right, let's kill my voice again. Hey, how long does this kind of thing take usually? Um, I can't be sure. Depends on what the doctor thinks is wrong. Whatever, say that. Uh, hypothetically, the thing is fine, not sick or broken at all. It'll be, what, 15 minutes? <clears throat> I really don't know. I'd say minimum about half an hour. Fine. Mother goes to sit down as I'm standing behind the desk wondering what I said wrong. She's wearing high heels, but she's still pressing down on her heels hard to let me know that I didn't give her a satisfactory answer. Excuse me. <clears throat> Mindy is still standing in front of me. The hamster's cage sat on the counter. Mm, why cat ears? And why pink dress? I seriously can't understand why anyone would like pink. <clears throat> would you like to see him? Cute kid. You know what? I would. Hamtrop, you said? Yes, his name's Hamtrop. Like Lambtrop, but he's a hamster. A goat and cream colored hamster with his big black eyes and an adorable pink nose stares up at me. And I was almost in a bad mood, too. Ay, ay, ay. Oh my god, I love him! Yeah, we. Um. We, we picked him up from the pet store. They called him Elvis at the pet store, but I, but I didn't think that was, didn't think it was good, a good name. Hey, that's okay. I like Hamchop. Um, it's a better name. Uh, I think it is a better name too. Wanna hold him? That would be against policy, and I haven't told Doctor McMillan that the hamster has arrived yet. I'm also not in the mood to not take some time to see a hamster at the behest of some bitch who thinks I'm her servant. Can I hold his cage? Yeah, just be careful. Daddy says he's a fragile hamster. He's fragile like glass. I will be extra super duper careful. Okay. I hold the cage up to my face to look at his tiny little eyes head on. He looks just like Mr. Barbasol. His nose is sticking out of the cage, shoving it through as if begging for attention. He doesn't look sick. I don't think he's too sick anymore. Okay, well, I'm going to go get the doctor. Without thinking, I lay a little pack on Hamchop's face and lower the cage to give back to Mindy. Suddenly, the cage is getting heavier. There's a light coming from somewhere I can't make out. My arms tight. My arm tightens in response to the immediate heaviness. Did someone just drop a bowling ball on my hand? I am attempting to have the cage back onto the table. No use. The cage drops to the ground. My eyes try to surface above the bright beaming light. Oh no 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 no! Don't tell me I have to censor it already. No. I see Mindy and the mom lady recoiling from the cage. My grip begins to loosen. I can barely see inside the thing. What I can see is a large lump of flesh. It's either taken the hamster of that's or that's a new ham chop. I'm startled and frightened and it's shockingly quiet. No din or explosion. Just a bright, blinding light and the stunned sound of three horrified women. The lump grows inside the cage, beginning to strain as it edges. <laughs> and can I... One second. What is blinking? What is blinking? Uh, I can't, can I? Alright. Onto the table for only a second longer. After that, I 
guess I realize that it's a lost cause. I recoil from the cage and pull back from whatever's inside of it. It grows arms. It's crying legs. It's crying inside of the cage. A small piece of metal wire has broken. The skin of the thing inside the cage is bleeding against the torn metal. Finally, in one instant, the cage has broken. A lump of flesh lifts itself upwards, standing taller than the world around it. It has a human form, light so gleaming off of its hair and its fingernails. Finally, the light comes and what's left is... <gasps> Thank you for the censoring! <laughs> a man. A beautiful man, standing butt naked in the middle of the veterinary clinic. <laughs> He has luminescent orange hair. His gaze has turned towards me. His eyes are a striking blue and his shoulders are pulled upright and tall. He seems serene, not fright frightened like us, not even shocked. He is calmer than every bit of the world I can pull together right now. The mother and child behind him are rushing themselves out of the door. Are they calling the police? The government? Suddenly, it's him. It is he and I. Us. Hi. Hi. Hi there. Um, hi. Hi. I'm struggling to say anything. I... Yes. That was not hi. That was I. I is not hi. He thinks I'm going to say something. Um. Hi. Hi. <coughs> Chapter 1 Edmund the Seventh. He's gorgeous. God Lord, he's gorgeous. He's completely naked. Like, I can see everything. Well, no, you can't. There's a cute little face. <laughs> he either hasn't seemed to notice yet or doesn't care. I don't even know what I'm looking at. I kissed a hamster, the cage broke, and a naked man is standing in front of me. My name is Edmund... Um, um, <clears throat> My name is Edmund the Seventh. Thank you for setting me free. I look up for a second. Oh, jeez, he's caught me staring at his crotch. I'm blushing red as a wildfire. <laughs> I keep my eyes fixed on him and extend my hand. My name is... Um, my name is Kaja. Pretty name. I've never met a Kaja. Hamster teeth? What the... He's got hamster-like buck teeth. Yee, that's... Kinda weird, adorable, kinda weird, kinda weird. Strange, I wasn't expecting that. I wish he'd stop being so naked, it sticks. It's distracting. Edmund, you said? Mm hmm. He said as he gave me a happy nod. I hope you don't mind me saying, Edmund, but you are super naked right now. Yes. I know. I promised myself that if I ever turned back, I wouldn't be the first thing. It wouldn't be the first thing I thought about. You don't say. I've had a lot of time to think. Uh huh. Give me one minute. Okay, Kaja, get your thoughts together and hurry! There's a naked man in the veterinary clinic and you are working there. Being an internet. Whatever. If Dr. McMillan comes out and sees this, it will be a very difficult thing to explain. So, first things first. Hi. Hi, Edmund. Hi. Would you mind coming with me? Not at all. Great! 
I drag Edmund down the hallway towards the bathroom, which he we have to pass by Doctor Yeah, which which we're going in here? Towards the bathroom which we have to pass by Doctor Macmillan's door to get to. Eh? Alright. We just go quickly. She didn't seem to notice. Inside the bathroom, Edmund sits down on the toilet. His wounds uh, from breaking out of the cage are mostly on his back, which I can see now. They are bloody, but the bleeding seems to have stopped. They do look bad, though. Surprisingly, Edmund doesn't seem to notice. Okay, just stay here for a bit. I don't know how long I'll be. Lock this door and just stay here. My pleasure. I close the door on him and walk towards the doctor's office. I have to think of a way, a very quick lie. Doctor? I stay outside of her office. She's on the phone with someone. I walk inside. Oh, um, what's her voice again? <clears throat> yes, absolutely. Not yet, but I've got a lot of my, a, a lot on my plate. I'll take some um, me time when I go up north. Doctor? Yes, Kaza. The family with um the hamster caught and cancelled. Really? I didn't hear the phone go off. Other line. Oh, right. I am on the phone. Oh, my bad. All right, then. Uh, hey, wait. Hmm. Something's come up. If I call Annie and she can fill in today, is it all right if I go home? Is everything okay? This is a pivotal moment? Pivotal? Pivotal? I don't know the word. Something moment. If I say so, everything is fine, then I do myself to looking like I'm just trying to skip out of work. If I tell her this is serious, she will absolutely want to know what's happening. I'll just have to be as straight up as I can. I don't know what's going on. Um, I can't really tell you right now. A hint? No. Kaja, you're scaring me. If it turns out to be nothing, I'll be back later today. I absolutely promise you. Well, you sound serious. I'm not supposed to reply to that. I was about to, though. Okay, I'll call Annie. Get out of here. You owe me one. Her voice is changing constantly. I'm <coughs> super sorry. Thank you, Dr. McMillan. Of course. Sorry, Kathy. No, it's my intern. Apparently an emergency. She's still talking as if uh, as I leave her office. Dr. McMillan is still unaware that there is a tall, statuesque, naked man in her bathroom. That cold stomach feeling is back. Should I tell her? Um. And how am I supposed to explain to her what a naked man is doing in her clinic? Tell me. I don't think she will believe as telling her that we kissed a hamster who turned human and is now naked in a bathroom. I don't think she would believe that. that. Say nothing. Mm. Yeah, best to leave well enough alone. Um, I'll just deal with the cold feeling. There are bigger matters at hand. I knock on the bathroom door. Yes. He says from inside, muffled. I need you to follow me. Be quick about it. All right, then. <coughs> cool. He's not opening the door. Oh, sorry. Still locked. Thought I had opened it. My bad. The door opens now. His wounds still look ghastly and he's still every bit as naked as he was before. Oh my god, does that hurt? <coughs> does what hurt? Good, that gives us some time. Okay, um, how smart are you?
come again? Do you know what a car is? Yes, I was just in one for, in one for coming here. <coughs> okay, okay, cool. Uh, Dr. McMillan keeps spare scrubs around here somewhere. I don't know scrubs. They are what I'm wearing. Aha, uh -huh. will they fit? God, I hope so. Great. Should I continue standing out here? No, no, I guess not. I'll get back inside the room. The bathroom. Okay, then. After grabbing the largest pair of scrubs I could find and one large towel, I handed the lot to Edmund in the bathroom. He told me that the scrubs don't fit. The towel should work, though. Apparently. Great! Uh, come on out. We are work walking to my house and grabbing my car. Then we're getting you clothes. You really don't need to be doing all of this. It's fine, really. Let's just get you to a place of normalcy before I start asking you questions. <coughs> stuff like, why was I in hamster? Yeah, stuff like that. And why did you change when, when I... Him. Oh man, this is a fairy tale. Oh jeez. Uh, I gotta ask. There's no effing way. I gotta ask. Edmund? Yes? Can I ask you a question? Yeah, go for it. You are not a prince, are you? Not anymore. <laughs> not anymore? Nope. But you were. Yep. A prince. Indeed. That got turned into a hamster. You're kidding. Nope. God, he's taking forever with that toe. Uh, and I kissed you. And you turned back into a prince. <laughs> I'm not a prince anymore. <clears throat> For all intents and purposes, you are a prince. Nope. I have no claim to anything anymore, except for a tiny metal cage, and I broke that. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> ay, ay, ay. I hope Mindy's not angry. But I'm absolutely not a prince. Shut the hell up, you're a prince. You're a prince because you were a prince, and then you were an animal, now you're a prince again. If you insist. The door opens, um, he hasn't even tucked the towel in, he's just holding both ends. He probably tried tucking it and couldn't. Edmund, you even look like a prince. But I'm not one. Uh, we can continue this discussion later. Alright then. Let's go get my car. We begin walking out of the, of the office and start trudging through the oppressive sun to get to my place. The journey is always longer coming back than it is walking there. We are forced to walk uphill rather than downhill to get my car. As we walk, sweat drops from my forehead and gets in my eyes. It's nice and cool out here. I don't miss sweating under all that for. Oops, that was him talking. Not me. Not me. No, not me. <coughs> I'm going to need to address this right away. I don't allow this. To, uh, I can't allow this to start. Ban casual hamster reference permanently? Let's slide this once. Ban it permanently. No. No, shut up. That's what people in movies say. Wow. Wow, my character is a bitch. Ahem. Don't start making casual references to being a hamster. Oh. I'm sorry, Kaja. No, no, please don't be sorry. I'm just, I'm not ready for the casualness. Like, you know, 
boy, this tastes a lot better. Tastes tastes a lot better than hamster pellet. Or like, I'm not used to pooping on anything other than wood shavings or something. My brain is swimming. I have a headache. It's way too hot, hot out here, and you just transformed from a small rodent. Fair enough. I apologize. Please don't. Just keep walking. Please. Edmund is silent for a bit. I didn't mean to yell at him. Apologizing would undeniably give me a worse headache, though. <clears throat> I just want to get to my car where there's air conditioning. We're almost there. Just a couple more minutes. All right. <clears throat> We reached our home. And that's enough for now. Um, enjoy whatever you're doing and have a great day or night, whatever time it is. Enjoy. <laughs>